The first time I saw this fight from Bulletproof Monk, I thought it was possibly the worst fight I'd ever seen in my life. And I didn't even have the context of the whole film, I just asked for fight scenes between romantic leads. I mean, it's probably not the worst thing ever, but I really personally dislike it. And so today, we're not only going to explain why, we're going to attempt to fix it. Yep. Time for another fight scene fix. Send help. So the thing that underpins a flirty fight is something that you know when you see, but that's really hard to manufacture. And that's chemistry. And if you mess with your scene too much in post-production, you can destroy what little chemistry your actors may have had to begin with. What the hell are you doing here? I mean, assuming that they had some chemistry to begin with. It is impossible to tell in this hot mess. You may think that least favorite fight ever is a pretty high bar to clear, but here's the thing. I'm not particularly interested in critiquing fights that are from movies where they know that the fights are terrible and they kind of lean into that. If it's random flailing in a B-movie or over-the-top screaming or all flash and no substance in a movie that is all flash and no substance, then generally, eh. But I really love flirty fights and I really hate it when they go wrong because it's just embarrassingly painful. My name is Jill Bearup and I pretend to fight people for fun. Also, I make videos about fights in movies, so if you like that kind of thing, subscribe. So briefly, the plot to this point in Bulletproof Monk go with thusly because that is going to be kind of necessary to explain how we got here. This guy has been guarding an ancient scroll for 60 years against Nazis, because of course, because he fulfilled some prophecies. He finds Carr and thinks, huh, maybe this guy is fulfilling the prophecies also, a replacement. Great! When Carr's friendly boss slash landlord is killed, they go to the house slash palace of Bad Girl, aka Jade, to get her help. Because literally there is no other person that Carr knows who might be able to help them. Jade is not impressed by Carr breaking into her house and they fight. I mean, I said I don't usually get upset about B-movies being bad, but yeah, that is kind of what this is. It's basically like Rush Hour, but without the charm. But I also said that I love flirty fights and they are my jam. And like those fanfiction tropes that you love so much that you will put up with really questionable writing, I will put up with a lot for a flirty fight scene that actually makes me think that the characters fancy each other. And they're not actually that hard to make good, even in films which are otherwise uninspiring. <sighs> We're gonna do our best to fix this. But since I realize that most of you probably haven't actually seen this movie, we're gonna do a play-by-play -play of exactly how the fight breaks down before we start improving it. So, Carr sneaks into the house. Hey, bad girl. Jade throws him to the ground. Carr, what the hell are you doing here? Mm, let's get the summary over with before we fix it, okay. He throws her off, dangles the necklace in front of her and claims she lost it. I didn't lose it, you stole it. He denies it, she insists, they roll around some more, she calls him a bad liar on top of being a liar. You can't lie for I'm a terrific liar. They break apart, he admits the truth. Okay, I did take it. Because, you know, he wanted to give it back. Sometimes he can be kind of an asshole. Uh, more fighting. I never lied to you about who I am. And you're saying that she did? Well, that's true. I thought you are from the streets like me. You don't know a damn thing about it. She punches at him some more. Have they ended up in exactly the same place again? Now I know someone's been messing with this in the editing room. She punches at him some more anyway, and he kisses her in a way that is really weird and also gross. You kinda liked that, didn't you? Color me. Resolutely uncharmed. And spin out. Why are you really here? Well, because of the plot, dear girl. And Finn, because she has mercifully, if briefly, knocked him out. Car. Awkward, right? But it can be fixed. Probably, because taking it from the top, it doesn't start too badly. The flipping over the sofa with your ankles bit is perhaps a little physically implausible, but it's that kind of movie, so I'm willing to go with it. And it's funny. And I will put up with a lot for funny. But then... Car, what the hell are you doing here? He's broken into your house, Lamkin, past dogs, gates, security personnel. Be at least a little bit impressed, or surprised, or angry, or something? Inappropriate or inadequate emotional responses are really difficult to work around. Bad choreography I can forgive, terrible special effects I can forgive, cheesy over-the-top wire work for characters who aren't even meant to have magic powers I can forgive to a certain extent, but half-assing the emotional energy in a scene just sucks the fun right out of it. A tip for aspiring YouTubers from Future Jill with her snazzy new glasses, when you start out on camera or voiceover, go a little bit overboard on the energy level you think you need. Once you have a lot of experience on camera, you'll know how much energy to project in various scenarios, but when you start out, most people don't have a clue. I know I didn't. So generally speaking, err on the side of more enthusiasm rather than less. More on that later. The thing I learned first, and I'm still trying to learn in stage combat, is that intent is everything. Intention is your number one priority in terms of selling a fight. You have to look like you mean it, and you have to sound like you mean it. What I find to be tricky about that is that it's possible to feel like you're meaning it, but when you watch it back, it doesn't look like you mean it at all. It is something that takes skill and practice. But this is just so very bad that we're just robbed of any emotional intent at all from the very first line. So let's fix that. Car? What the hell are you doing here? 
The next problem is that he flips her over and she just kind of lies there while he's delivering his line. This demonstrates so many of the fight's problems that we're gonna take a minute or two, okay? Problem number one, lack of physiological arousal. If you're in a fight, you're in danger, or at least slightly at risk. And fighting is a fairly physically intensive thing to do, so you get, you know, tired, out of breath, hyped up, something. But here, while there's a noise when she lands on the floor, we get nothing. No heavy breathing, no animated facial expressions, no attempt to get up off the floor while Kara is delivering his line. If this necklace is so significant to you, why aren't you grabbing for it? To fix it, it's fine that she's lying on the floor and taking a second, maybe have her breathe a little bit harder to suggest that she's mildly winded or at least surprised, and then as soon as she focuses on the necklace, have her make a grab for it, and then have him pull away immediately. When we do these fixes, I tend to try and keep in as much of the original fight as possible, so if you want to do the weird foot thing at that point, then I'm not gonna stop you. I didn't lose it, you stole it. Here we demonstrate problem number two, although again, more emotion would be helpful. This is ADR, which stands for Automated or Automatic Dialogue Replacement. ADR is when the actors dub over their previous performances in post. Sometimes because there's bad sound on set, sometimes the director wants something different, sometimes it's because they want to completely rewrite half the dialogue in the scene, which I think is probably the case here. So I feel like it's more like AD, because what's it even replacing? That's not true. That is also ADR, although less obvious, but when you can't see an actor deliver a line, you do start to wonder. To fix this bit, we're gonna cut out You're a liar. Because it just doesn't need to be here. Instead I didn't lose it, you stole it. That's not true. We're going to have Jade shove Car over there and then pin him like a normal person, facing him. And you're a pickpocket, you expect me to believe that? I know this is probably supposed to look suggestive, but it just looks incompetent. Incompetence is not sexy. I'm sorry, it's not. Yeah, I'm a nice guy. I wouldn't steal from you. Anyway, they'll roll until they're to the same spot, out of breath, and definitely not having said the bit about being a pickpocket or I'm a nice guy either. And now they're facing each other on the floor, you can have a nice overhead shot and maybe a line like... This line, though you really have to sell. Because you've got to have a mix of emotions. Like, you don't have to have all of the things I'm about to mention, but you have to have at least a few. It's got to be angry, but also a little bit impressed, but also this is kind of an intimate moment and we're a little bit close together, but also this is very meaningful to me and how dare you. It's going to be a tricky line to deliver right, is what I'm saying, but it's crucial to sell the idea that she is actually interested in him. I'm a terrific liar. This part works so badly in the movie, not just because of the dodgy dialogue and the ADR, but because one, her incompetence makes us feel like Carr hasn't really earned this point, and two, because it looks like this second part is an insert because you can't actually see the actress's face, which combined with the terrible ADR and the jumping around geographically makes me think someone really wasn't happy with the initial cut of this fight. But anyway, if you want to keep the general flow of how this fight goes, then you can have them break apart at this point. Okay, I did take it. Instead of this, whatever this is, I'd have her swing for him and him catch her rather than because I'm not quite sure what this is and it just looks like a dance move. Which is all very well if you're at a Shakespearean play and the line is Come, sit on me. But just kind of looks weird here. The reason we took out most of the you're a liar stuff is because we need an emotional lead in to the truthful part that kind of makes sense. Okay, I did take it. Most of the dialogue to this point revolves around the necklace and ideally we want a line that will prick Carr's conscience. Hey Carr, remember that you're here because you need help and the necklace is just a convenient conceit? Look, it was a stupid thing to do. Anyway, we can have this line. Hey, I may have lied to you about the necklace, but I never lied to you about who I am. That's fine, and I'd have a close-up on the actress's face for... You're saying that I did. Yeah. Then we can have this following around the room section, which I'm pretty sure was a later insert, but there we are. So long as we do actually end up back in the same place. Or you just leave them in the same spot and at some point they circle around each other so that they're back to where they started. Or we film in this bit in a different place, whichever, but... You don't know a damn thing about it. With a little more conviction. Anyway, while we've taken out most of the direct references of Jade calling Carr a liar, we're still implying that enough that the dialogue makes sense here. Moving on. Oh, we need to fix this weird kissing part. Like, they need to be in closer. Him pulling her in to kiss her just doesn't make sense, it's just creepy and yuck. Ideally, to keep it a little bit less, you know, assaulty, you want them both to move. Even if one character is closing the gap, having the other character tip their head or close their eyes or something to, you know, give you the idea that they're on board with it is kind of essential here. If you look at something like The Empire Strikes Back, Leia keeps on talking, but she gives no ground at all and she moves in while Han is right next to her. This is kind of a weird flirty fight specific trope, but you do need to get it right, otherwise it's just kind of gross. Kind of like that, didn't you? No. No. Cut. Actually, just cut this whole bit. Go straight from the kiss to maneuvering his arm behind his back, have her grab the necklace from his hand. Why are you really here? And then don't explain the plot. 
Just have him sigh because now she's got the necklace and he really needs to get down to what they're actually there for. I came because I need your help. And then if you are heck bent on Jade and the monk having a little heart to heart, cut to a later scene of them, I don't know, maybe in the kitchen or something. And he can thank her for helping them out and they can say things about running away from palaces or whatever you want. It's obvious when you look at it that this scene was originally conceived quite differently. And I don't know if the original would have been better, but at least it wouldn't have had terrible ADR, so that would have been one thing. The worst part is the complete lack of chemistry between the leads, but it's impossible to tell how much of that is personal and how much is skill level and how much is directing, but Jade is iffy and Carr and Jade are kind of painful. Especially because there are moments elsewhere in the film, like this one. Jeez, it's a nice collection of toys your father keeps in the garage. You said these are my dad's. Where you start to see some of Jade's actual personality and the fact that that doesn't come out in this scene is just even more painful because of it. It hurts me. If we just had that character for the whole film, that would have been great. Yeah. Still, I think we've done a fair job of improving it, right? And now future Jill with her new glasses has returned to say, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And if you remember that point I made earlier about aspiring YouTubers and being on camera and energy levels, well, that's only one of the things you need to think about if you're trying to make YouTube videos. Skillshare is an online learning platform for creatives where you can search for anything that you might need to do and learn more about it ad free. Maybe you want some help with storyboarding or video editing so your projects don't turn out as badly as this fight did. Skillshare can help. Or maybe you just want to get some advice on productivity from Thomas Frank. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. And if you note that I'm looking a little bit nicer in the colour department these days, well I mentioned a while ago I was taking colour grading from beginner to advanced in Final Cut Pro X with Miles Fernley, and that, you know, helped. Look at me, Ma. I know how colour wheels work. If you're curious about a topic, if you're working in a creative industry and want to expand your skills, if you just want to make more good things in 2021, Skillshare can help. And with annual membership, it costs less than $10 a month. If you'd like to see some breakdowns of other, better, flirty fight scenes, then there should be some examples next to my face. Regardless, see you all on the 1st of March.